By 2050, it is predicted that 66% of the world's human population will live in cities. As development expands into the remaining natural areas to accommodate this human population growth, it is imperative to understand how the current and growing levels of urbanization impacts wildlife. Previous research from terrestrial environments has revealed that some species are highly sensitive to urbanization and tend to avoid human-dominated landscapes. While other species thrive in urban areas, even sometimes becoming dependent on exploiting urban resources. Some species, however, rely mostly on natural habitats, but may frequent urban impacted areas. Large land predators like lions and wolves tend to avoid urban areas. And when they do come close to cities, they usually do so during periods of low human activity, like at night. Land carnivores with more specialized diets also tend to be more sensitive to urbanization compared to those with more generalist diets. To date, responses of species to urbanization have primarily been studied in terrestrial habitats. In fact, little is known about how urbanization impacts marine species, especially ocean predators like sharks. To address this knowledge gap, scientists set out to investigate if and how the movements and space use of several shark species were influenced by urbanization. And what better place to study this than the ultimate coastal metropolis, Miami, Florida. Miami is located on the shorelines of Northern Biscayne Bay, where waters adjacent to the city experience high levels of human disturbance, from recreational fishing, boat traffic, nutrient runoff, light pollution, sewage outflows, and habitat destruction. But as you move south, farther away from the city, these human disturbances decline, with much of the natural habitat protected within Biscayne National Park. This spatial gradient in human impacts provides an excellent opportunity to evaluate the relationship between shark space use and urbanization. We focused on three large coastal shark species, bull, nurse, and great hammerheads. To study their movements, we equipped sharks with small tags that emitted ultrasonic tings in a unique pattern. We then set up an array of underwater receivers that listen for these unique pings transmitted by each tag. If an acoustically tagged shark came within the receiver's detection range, its presence was recorded. These detections allowed us to evaluate how long sharks were spending in different areas. So based on what we know about land predators, we predicted that sharks would also be urban avoiders, exhibiting lower residency in areas of highest urbanization. We also predicted that sharks would increase their use of highly urbanized areas during periods of lower human activity, like during nighttime and weekdays or holidays. And finally, dietary specialists like the great hammerhead shark would display lower use of urbanized areas compared to bull and nurse sharks, which are more generalist hunters. Contrary to our predictions, sharks were not avoiding urban impacted areas closest to the city. Shark residency in urban areas didn't increase during periods of lower human activity, and great hammerheads didn't show higher avoidance behavior towards the city compared to nurse and bull sharks. In fact, all three shark species displayed behaviors resembling that of an urban adapter, utilizing urban areas while still relying on more natural habitat. One possible explanation to the differences we found between sharks and land predators could be how aspects of urbanization impact terrestrial and ocean landscapes differently. In terrestrial environments, fragmentation caused by urbanization often involves physical barriers to animal movement, like in the case of roads and fences. But in the ocean, there really aren't any comparable man-made physical barriers to animal movement that would restrict access to different habitats by marine predators. But why do sharks spend so much time in urban areas close to Miami? We suspect it could be due to increased foraging opportunities from shore-based activities like fish carcasses being discarded at marinas or by the Miami Sea Aquarium, perhaps even from increased prey availability supported by primary productivity driven by nutrient runoff. Regardless of why sharks are spending time close to the city, their presence in urban areas have implications for their health and conservation, given increased susceptibility to pollution and fishing pressure in human-dominated areas. 
Understanding and ultimately predicting how marine species will respond to current and growing levels of urbanization will be important for informing wildlife conservation and enabling a sustainable future of coexistence with wildlife.